poor in spirit, not arrogant, lowly, not proud. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. They will always mourn at things ungodly, at things sinful, whether it's happening through, whether it happened to them or they see it in others or through others, they mourn. And God will comfort them. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. These are things that characterize the citizens of the kingdom. And that is the expectation of God uh, from every one of us. We are delivered from old sinfulness through genuine repentance. And there is now a regeneration. There is now a transfer from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, which is the kingdom of light. And once we have made this decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be that determination to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, to abide in the Lord at all times, to continue in Him. And this is done by daily walking in the knowledge of His will, in the light of His word, praying and continuing in fellowship in the gospel. Now look up. I know you will pray. And I know by the grace of God, your prayer will bring about a great change into your life today. And thereafter, you begin to walk in the light of the gospel. You begin to walk in the fullness uh, of his will. No longer self-willed. No longer in misbehavior. But a, a, a spirit-led life. A spirit-filled life. A spirit-guided life. And your life will be all light all over. Now you have opportunity today as you go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, so that by the grace of God, all that God requires of you, all that God wants to see in you, all will be done by the grace of God. Uh, shall we all rise up as we pray now? Let's rise up. Close your eyes and let's talk to the Lord. You want to be a citizen in the kingdom. Look at, look at, look at the benefits that are uh, waiting that kingdom citizens are presently enjoying and they will still enjoy in eternity and that are awaiting those who also will come in into the kingdom. Pray and commit yourself unto the Lord. Already you have been assured that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all and it's for you to really tap into that grace and through that grace receive forgiveness and let's, let, uh, bring an end upon your waywardness, your sinfulness, your, your lustfulness, and your ungodliness. God is able. God is able. The Lord is willing. And uh, I, don't want you to, I don't want you to sit down. I don't want you to end this prayer as a sinner. There is provision from God. Grace abundant. And the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you is still available. It's still available today. So allow God to have his way with you. Yes? As we pray, I want to give you that opportunity. And as you are praying there, you know, at the beginning of this message, you began as a sinner. Uh, you began as a sinner. And now you are deciding, knowing fully well that no benefit for you outside the kingdom, no benefit for you outside there, but God is willing to impart the benefits on you. He wants you to enjoy this benefit here on earth and in eternity. As you are there, you are deciding to forsake your sin and to receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior with all, with all determination that you, know, you will no longer continue your life as a sinner with all the provision that God is making for you. Will you just place your hand upon your chest? Place your hand upon your chest whether you are alone there, whether you are in the congregation, whether you are in your vehicle, just uh, park and make it a time to pray. Because this is a crucial moment. 
the decision that you are making to repent from sins is the most glorious decision you can ever make on earth. It is the most blessed decision you can make. Make that decision. God is willing to save you. He is not willing that any should perish. And as you place your hand upon your chest, tell God directly, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. Break the hold of sin upon my life. Let there be an end upon the sinful life that I've been living. Help me, O oh Lord. He is hearing you. He is hearing you. Over there in America, he is hearing you. Whether north or south. Over there in Australia, New Zealand, he is hearing you. In any part of Asia where you may be, and you are connected with this message at this time, is hearing you. In Europe, God is merciful over there, is hearing you. And if you are here in Africa, God is equally hearing you. All that come unto him, he will no wise cast out. Let Jesus come into your heart. Become a new creature in Christ. Let your name be written among the kingdom citizens over there in heaven. Let's pray together. You can say after me with your hand still on your chest and your other hand raised up unto the Lord. Now, the Lord, here am I. I mean it. Here is my hand, O Lord. Take me. Now, let's pray. Pray after me. Almighty God, I thank you for what you made me to hear. I am grateful unto you that you don't want me to perish in my sins. I thank you very much because you want me to be a kingdom citizen. I have confessed my sins and I believe you have heard me. Your word assures me that if I confess, you will forgive. Forgive me all in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you made me to know that as many as receive you, to them you give power to become sons of God. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you in as my Lord and as my Savior this day. With DirecTV, I can get live TV and on demand together. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. Whoops. I just want to talk. Go, 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 go. Get your TV together. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV to save up to $120. Drum roll, please. I dedicate this restaurant to the Raising Cane's Christmas. Light up your holidays with Raising Cane's chicken fingers, gift cards, and plush puppies. Happy, happy, happy Christmas from Raising Cane's and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's a beaut, Todd. It really is. You taught me everything I know about exterior illumination. Receive me among your own. And from this day, make me a new you. And by your grace, for the rest of my life, I follow you. I leave my sins behind. Thank you very much, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, let's pray together. Faithful Father, loving Lord, 
We thank you very much and we praise your name for these people that have made decision. You love them and you have heard your word and they have also opened up their hearts unto you. Father, completely cleanse them from their past sins in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh Lord, that as they have invited Jesus into their hearts, as the Lord Jesus Christ comes in, they will become brand new creatures before you in Jesus' name. And all that may have been against them before this time, remove, O oh Lord. The hold of sin in their lives, I pray you will break away. And Lord, I pray that henceforth, the fruit of repentance will break forth in their lives. And from today onward, they will abide in Christ and they will not forsake. They will continue in your word. Keep them, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And in times of temptations, keep them. And keep them looking unto you and trusting in you. And that everywhere they be, Lord God, that the evidence that they belong to you will be manifested. Thank you very much, O oh Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us on our program today. Perhaps you have responded to God's call to salvation. He is called to come home and to experience His precious love. That call comes with a great promise. The promise that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you made the decision to follow Christ. I said praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your compassion. Thank you for your purpose. We're asking, Lord, that today, this session, you open your heart, open the scriptures to everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, your word will do good in every life. Transform every life. Make everyone triumphant in the Lord in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word and your promise in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said another. Triumphant, amen. Victorious, amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Again, we're coming to Daniel. And we're coming to Daniel chapter 4. I'm looking at Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Daniel chapter 4, verse 37. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride he is able to abase also do you to look at that last part of the sentence he is able able to do all things positive negative able to do all things prophetic, practical, able to do all things in that generation and in this generation, able to do all things according to his will, according to his mind, according to his purpose, according to his prediction, his promise and prophecy. This morning, this session in Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at the message, able, able, God is able. Every time, everywhere, for everyone, according to his plan, according to his purpose, able, able, God is able. I'm sure you understand and you know where we're coming from? Chapter 1 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 2 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 3 mentions Nebuchadnezzar. As we look at Nebuchadnezzar at the end of chapter 3, it said, I praise the God of heaven. 
because the people that trust in him who because of that are trustworthy and the, the people that have faith in him who because of that are faithful and the people that lean on him and the people that depend on him therefore they are dependable he has protected them he has preserved them they went through the fire but the fire was not able to touch them or to do anything negative in their lives that same Nebuchadnezzar religious that same Nebuchadnezzar that at the moment his testimony appeared convincing it appeared this must be a converted man but you know conversion goes beyond the watch of the mouth conversion goes beyond the testimony temporal temporary of a moment conversion will take place in the heart it will make a change it will make a transformation it's more than joining a church it's more than changing outward expression it's more than wearing a garment it's more than a temporary confession about the lord god almighty conversion is a transformation of the heart a change of life a change of disposition a change in every area and the heart now being humble before the lord will not go into pride anymore but nebuchadnezzar shows us the average religious man shows us the average churchgoer and shows us the average member of any denomination even though they confess even though they read the bible even though they even see miracles happening in other lives it takes internalizing the word internalizing the promise internalizing the power of a creator god in their lives and making a definite change that's why as we come to chapter 4 of daniel god had to do something that humiliated the man turned the man from being a man to what he really is to a beast and when reality came to him and he saw the power of God that turned everything around he now had a real transformation a real conversion and a real confession that now said God the God of heaven the most high God that that God is Able. And he now gives a testimony, not what he saw in Daniel, a testimony, not what he saw on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, a testimony of what had happened unto him. In Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 1, Daniel chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people nations and languages that dwell on in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you look at verse 2 in verse 2 i thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high god has wrought toward me in verse 3 he says how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. Verse 34. In verse 34, it says, And at the end of the days, the days of discipline for Nebuchadnezzar, the day of heaven having impact, and real irresistible pressure on the man on earth it said and all the at the end 
of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. He had lost his understanding. He had lost his mind. He had lost what made him a man. But now he said, at the end of the time of the discipline, my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35, it says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth, when they make themselves opposed to the Almighty. Now, this does not talk about Daniel. Daniel, a beloved man before the Almighty God. This does not talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Abesh, Ab uh, and Abednego, and um, all those three people, it, it, they were so important in sight of the Lord. The Lord God of heaven sent Christ unto them. And it's not talking of people like Peter, like John, like James. It's not talking about people like Paul. All because God appointed him to be an apostle that will carry his message to the rest of the world, but the ordinary people and the normal people and the monarchs and the kings and, and the people on earth, all these inhabitants of the earth that regard God as nothing, God also regards them as nothing. All the inhabitants of the earth that make God of nothing, God also makes them of nothing. And Nebuchadnezzar himself, an emperor, Nebuchadnezzar himself, a king all over the powers, all over the universe at that time, those who regard me, those who honor me, I will regard and honor. And those who despise me and make little of me, I make little or nothing of them. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, None. American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge communities offer a free home away from home, closer to cancer care. People are meant to be together. Donate to help keep it that way. Can stay a sand or say unto him, What doest thou? Verse 36, in verse 36, at the same time, my reason, my reasoning, my faculties returned unto me and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me and my counselors and my lords sought unto me and I was established in my kingdom and Excellent majesty was added unto me. Now he concludes in verse 37. It says in verse 37, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, for real, I, Nebuchadnezzar, with conviction, I, Nebuchadnezzar, with a change of life, a transformation of heart, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol, exalt, and honor the king, capital K, the king of heaven, who has authority over all the kings and the lords and the emperors on earth and all whose words are truth and his ways judgment. 
and those that walk in pride at that time and at this time those that walk in pride like pharaoh like nebuchadnezzar like herod and those that walk in pride among all men in every generation those that walk in pride he is able to abase that's why we're looking at this chapter now Abel, Abel, the God who is able. We divide the passage to three parts. Number one is talking about the testimony of a proud king after humiliation. When he said, who is that God? And he carried on in a proud disposition. The God of heaven showed him who is in charge. Who brought Judah to Babylon. Who defeated Jehoiakim. Who brought Nebuchadnezzar to the point where he was that he ruled in the generation of men. Now. Nebuchadnezzar realized and he gave testimony, the testimony of a proud king after humiliation. Number two, the tree with a peculiar kind of hardness. The tree, and actually, he's talking of Nebuchadnezzar as the tree. Remember what Jesus said, if they have done this to a green tree, Referring to himself, man is like a tree planted by God, grows around with all the circumstances around him, and eventually the tree might be cut down. And so man is shown, represented, symbolized by a tree in the dream that God gave Nebuchadnezzar, gave Nebuchadnezzar the tree with a peculiar kind of hardness. The kind of hardness Nebuchadnezzar had was peculiar. And he also had a peculiar treatment because of his peculiar hardness. Number three now is the triumph of the powerful king of heaven. The triumph. God will triumph in every case. In your case, in my case, in your family, in the church, among the Jews, on Israel, Nebuchadnezzar may think, I got them, I captured them, I put them in captivity, but the king of heaven has the final say. And even Nebuchadnezzar will confess that the king of heaven has the final say. Any Nebuchadnezzar may brag, may boast. Any Nebuchadnezzar, any man, any woman, anyone hearing me now, anyone here or there, anywhere, may brag and boast and may say, I am this, I am that. I will do this, I will do that. My friend, my neighbor, God. The king of heaven has the final say, the triumph of the powerful king of heaven. Let's look at number one here. Number one here, we're looking at the testimony of a proud king after his humiliation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4 verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all the people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. We divide this section to three parts. Number one, number one, the supernatural signs and wonders of God on high. Number two, the, spectac the spectacular signs and works of the God of heaven. And then number three, the steadfast saints 
and words of God for all humans, for everyone. Look at number one there. Number one is the supernatural signs and wonders of God on high. The God on high. The God who is able and the God who does signs and wonders every time, everywhere. Daniel chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 again it says, And Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, all nations and all languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. We're well, looking at uh, verse 2 now. In verse 2 it says, I thought it good to show. Oh, great. My wireless bill just went up. Hmm. Should have gone with U.S. Cellular. They aren't raising prices on any of their plans. Seriously? Yeah, my price won't increase. Well, that is refreshing. I feel like everywhere you turn these days, prices are going up. Supply chain got us too. Don't get me started on the overhead cost. At US Cellular, every plan for everyone is price protected. You know, I respect a female entrepreneur. US Cellular, where every plan is price protected. Hi, Aaron. Can you pick up 10 $500 gift cards for the office bonuses and email back the PIN numbers? The signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. He was going to give testimony as to what God has done. And he says what God did and what God is doing and what God will yet do. They are nothing short of signs and wonders. Look at that same Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 22. In Daniel chapter 6, looking at verse 22, it says God has said, his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before the before him innocency was found in me and also before the o king have i done no hurt. look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says in this verse then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God, signs and wonders. Into the lion's den, a night in the lion's den, and coming out unhurt, and coming out the way he went in with faith as the faithful, he came out with the freshness of energy and confidence, faithfulness unto the Lord, signs and wonders. Whether it's in chapter 2, or in chapter 3, or chapter 4, or chapter 6, signs and wonders done by the Lord. Until today, Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, it tells us how shall we escape if we neglect to a uh, so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him look at verse 4 there in verse 4 god also bearing them witness were signs and wonders god Bearing them, them who, Enoch, Noah, bearing them witness, them who, Abraham, them who, Joseph, bearing them witness, them who, them, the children of Israel, the more they persecuted them, the more they multiplied and grew, them who, at the wench, 
to the river, the Red Sea. Nothing, what had never happened, the power of God parted the Red Sea and they went over, bearing them witness, them who, the children of Israel, by the rock, and the waters gushed out of the rock. Them who, the children of Israel, by river Jordan, that at the feet of the priest, head on Jordan, Jordan divided them who Joshua, as he told the sun, sun stand there, and the moon stand there, and the sun so still, and will not move, and will not, the rotation of the earth around the sun will not take place for almost a day. Them who, them, the children of Israel, as now Caleb came to boast and the brag, and he one day got sent an angel and destroyed the army of 185,000 militant soldiers. God is still walking signs and wonders. And when Christ came, walking on the water, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, and casting those evil spirits out, and even raising the dead, Lazarus, that had died, and for four days, now God, Christ raised him up, God bearing them witness. Both were signs and wonders, and diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will that God is still alive today. There's something uncommon happening here in the Commonwealth. We're making world-class research more accessible to more students in more ways for less. Solving the world's challenges demands diverse thinking. So we're bringing new minds to the table and equipping them with high quality research and innovative thinking. So they're ready to answer whatever questions tomorrow might bring. Old Dominion University. With DirecTV, I can get live TV and on demand together. Football, housewives. Football, housewives. <laughs> Whoops. I just want to talk. Go, 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 go. Get your TV together. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV to save up to $120. He'll bear your witness. With signs, with wonders, with power, with miracle, with manifestation you never saw in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He bears us witness. It says and it shows, I'm still God, and I'm still alive, and wherever you are, and whatever your condition, it bears witness, both for signs and wonders. Look at number two here. Number two here is the spectacular signs and works of the God of heaven. It tells us in Daniel chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 3. It says in verse 3, now how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders, his works, his kingdom, it's an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Aren't you glad that God didn't only work in the generation of Abraham? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God didn't work only in the generation of Moses or Joshua? He's still working today. Aren't you glad that God is not limited to the generation of Elijah and Elisha? That even now, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Even now, its dominion is from generation to generation. In this, our generation, in your lifetime, in my lifetime, it will do whatever he has ever done in any other generation. Mighty works, great works, spectacular works, signs and works of the Lord. In Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 37. It tells us in verse 37, and when he was calm, calm, nice, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all 
the mighty works, all the mighty works, all the mighty works, 